5 billion people in the world currently without access to safe and affordable surgery, and because of that is responsible for about 18 million lives lost each year. It is by far the largest um, problem at the moment in global health. Uh, to give you a little bit of, 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 uh, kind of contrast, um, uh, diseases like tuberculosis or HIV are probably responsible for just over uh, 1 million lives lost each year. You know, um, access to safe and affordable surgery is a huge problem. And that's due to a lot of different reasons, but partially, um, you know, being able to have the, the medical workforce, the surgeons, anaesthetists, and obstetricians available, um, we need an additional 2.2 million uh, surgeons um, before 2030 in order to reach World Health Organization targets. We need, that's basically double the existing surgical workforce. Um, and the problem is the way that we, we teach surgery uh, hasn't actually changed in the last um, 200 years or so. It still largely involves looking over somebody else's shoulder in a crowded operating theatre. Um, now, we do have, have textbooks, but they can't really bridge the gap between your, your theoretical knowledge and the practical ability to actually um, perform an operation. Um, we do have uh, uh, iPads, um, but they don't really offer the same level of fidelity. Um, they don't offer the same um, experience of actually being inside an operating theatre. And we do have simulators. Um, so simulators are uh, can be incredibly expensive, but very good in terms of being able to practice a surgical operation with a, a big piece of equipment that could give you some kind of haptic feedback, some force feedback about what you're doing. Um, however, um, I've been working in the field of, of interactive imagery and virtual reality for the past five or so years, and this could offer a really great opportunity um, to actually provide uh, training um, for everybody in the world as if they're stood next to a surgical operation, uh, uh, stood there next to a, a, a surgeon. Um, so earlier in the year, um, uh, we got together with uh, two co-founders, um, Dr. Shafi Ahmed, who's a colorectal surgeon at Royal London Hospital, and Steve Dan, who owns a production company called Augmented uh, Amplified Robot that specializes in augmented reality. And we were wondering you know, if, if you could capture a surgical operation, provide it to somebody in a virtual reality headset, and give everybody the experience of being stood directly next to a surgeon, walking through an operation, that could be incredibly powerful. YouTube recently started supporting 360 degree video. Um, enables, you to, enables us to give a kind of a bit of Welcome a to the virtual surgeon demo by Medical Realities. At the Royal London a Hospital. bit of a demonstration of what he would look, 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 look uh, be looking at. To eat since last night. So I want to make sure we've explained the procedure to you. You're aware of the possible complications and that you're fully consenting to everything. And I want to let you know that the anaesthetists have had a look at your medical history. They've examined you and they're quite happy for you to go under the anaesthetic. So this first part, we're actually trying to see if we could use this as a tool to give patients, to give doctors, uh, the view of what, what their patients go through. So we can see the surgeon working here. I'm going to go into full screen again. Uh, we can turn around and have a look at uh, what the surgeon is seeing on the laparoscopic monitor. Uh, whilst you're viewing this in a virtual reality headset, it is it precisely as if you were stood next to a, a surgeon walking you through an operation. Um, if we skip through to the end slightly, um, we can see them when they're actually doing a little bit of a little bit of open surgery there. We're actually doing a study at the moment with University of Glasgow to measure whether this is going to be a useful thing for um, for surgeons. What's tricky for me is that because virtual reality is this massive buzzword at the moment, you'll put a headset on someone and they'll say, "Oh my God, that was amazing!" But they might be talking about the technology itself, and it's the, the technology is so incredible that it kind of uh, overwhelms you, and it it takes a bit of time to actually figure out, you know, is this content valuable? Bit of a technical question. Uh, obviously, you're, I understand with the CG side, you're uh, attempting to recreate surgery in all different forms. Are you able to account for all the variations of, sort of medical problems, everything a patient can have, or are you looking just to concentrate on sort of a general scenario, what, what normally happens in like, lo most of the cases? Okay, to answer this one. Um, so, there, obviously, the human body is incredibly uh, complex. Um, one of the guys that I was doing the uh, piece with in the University of, of uh, Glasgow, they created the, the, the highest resolution head and neck um, uh, model um, uh, ever, ever made. It's a huge million dollar project. Um, um, and they've only just got the model. Things like how it interacts, um, that's still being kind of worked upon now. Um, we can start by targeting the type of operations that we can do without having to necessarily um, um, have, have such a complete working model of the human body. Things like um, laparoscopic surgery, when you're not actually touching uh, specific sections, or, or microsurgery, uh, where you don't have any haptic feedback. I think for me, that's the type of, uh, of areas to t target first, because we don't yet need the technology to be where we want it to be in the future. 
Thank you very much. That's all we've got time for. Brilliant. Big round of applause.